but some of the path could be destructive. So at one particular location, we might have constructive interference. And so we, the signal might be very good. But if you simply walk away by maybe just within half a wavelength, those constructive interference will become destructive. Yeah? And when it becomes destructive, the strong signal will suddenly become very weak. And that is a major problem. In fact, multipath fading is a much deeper problem for wireless comms than the other two. Because the other two are relatively slow varying. Because we could estimate um, how the signal is attenuated over the distance such that we could compensate it by transmitting with a higher power. However, multipath fading, because it varies so quickly, we probably can't do that. And what it will also uh, create is it will create deep fade. By deep fade, we means that the channel is very weak. It's so weak that it will lead to very poor performance. And these are the, uh, the channel models. Of course, there are uh, much more sophisticated theories, but because this lecture is only one hour, I'm not, uh, I won't be able to go through those theories with you. However, by knowing these kind of uh, models, we kind of know what is the challenge for wireless. As I've mentioned, fading is a major problem. However, what is the effect of fading? I would like to uh, well, spend some time to go through the effect of fading, because once we know the effect of fading, then we know how severe the problem is, and we know how to solve it. First of all, well, when we look at uh, communication systems, when we try to look at the performance, the performance measure is the, usually the bit error rates, the BER. The bit error rate is the average bit error rate. So out of many channel environments, we average the bit error rate and then look at how good the performance is. Because if the bit error rate is very high, it means that there are lots of error, which, which means the performance is bad. But if the bit error rate is low, then it means that uh, there are a very little amount of error, and so the performance is good. Now, the bit error rate will, is dominated by high BER. The average BER is dominated by any particular instance that have very high bit error rate. Even for that instance to occur, even the probability for that instance to occur is very low. What do I mean by that? The following is uh, an example. If I have uh, two scenarios, yeah? in one scenario, the probability of error is 10 to the minus 2. Yeah? The probability of that occurring is only 0 0.1. But on the other hand, the other situation is that the See, yeah. The other uh, situation is that the probability of error is 10 to the minus 6, which is very good, which is very low. And the, the chance of that occurring is 0 0.9. So intuitively, we would have thought that this system is quite good, because for most of the time, the bit error rate is very low. For 90% of the time, the bit error rate is 10 to the minus 6. Only 10% of the time, the bit error rate is 10 to the minus 2. With, we would thought that the performance is good. However, actually, if you look at the average, it's not good. If you look at the average, the next equation shows the average. If we take the average, it turns out that the average is about 10 to the minus 3, which is not that good. Although it's not very bad, but it's comparing to uh, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 3 is quite bad. So what I want to say is that the average performance is dominated by any scenario that have high bit error rates. Or in other words, the average bit error rates will be dominated by any poor performance. And poor performance occurs when we have deep fade. As I've mentioned, because of multipath fading, once in a while, we will have very deep fade. But once we have deep fade, from this, we can see that even if a, deep, if a chance for deep fade to occur is very low, it will severely distort the performance. 
Again, the following is another um, illustration of this point. If we are plotting the bit error rates in a linear scale, of course, you shouldn't be plotting in linear scale. Uh, if we plot bit error rates, we always plot in the log scale in the, the y-axis. But just to illustrate this point, I plot it in a linear scale. The, uh, the y-axis is the bit error rate. The x-axis is the signal-to-noise ratio. If I have, well, this is the blue line is the BER. If I look at um, two scenarios, if I have one scenario that has a single-to-noise ratio of 0 0.5 dB, another scenario that the single-to-noise ratio is 2.5 dB. Yeah. So from this, if we take the interpolation, the average beta rate between the two is somewhere there, which is somewhere about 0.1-ish. However, if we have the average signal-to-noise ratio, if we take the average signal-to-noise ratio first, the average, because one of the signal-to-noise ratio is 0.5, another one is 2.5, so the average is 1.5. If we could take the average first, then the bit error rate of the average SNR is much lower than this case. So what this tells us is that the average bit error rate is much, much higher than the bit error rate of the average signal-to-noise ratio. The next diagram shows you the performance of that. This is a very typical uh, simulation. This is for um, BPSK in Rayleigh fading. Rayleigh fading is in the blue line. Fade, well, Rayleigh fading is one model of the uh, fading channel. The red line is the AWGN, the additive white Gaussian noise. Uh, so there's only noise, the channel is always one. From this case, you can see that when there is fading, which is the blue line, the performance is much, much worse than the red line. As I've said, the reason is because in the fading case, when the channel is very weak, it will dominate the BER and it will make the performance very, very poor. So that is why the fading channel is such a major problem. And what we wanted to do uh, as an engineer, we want to somehow find ways to approach this line. 